Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to everyone joining us online today as well. We have a few announcements to highlight. Some of them are repeats, so I'm uh, just going to pick and choose a couple of them. Please take a look at your announcement insert. First, uh, please do continue to keep Kate Kraft and her family in your prayers. Kate was hospitalized again this week. A bump in the road, as it was described on Facebook. Um, but I believe that she uh, was discharged just yesterday. Is that correct? Yes. So she's back home. So please do uh, continue to keep Kate, her family, and her journey ahead of her in your prayers. Be sure to mark your calendar for October 31st. That's when we will be uh, giving our third grade students their Bibles on behalf of the congregation. And the Sunday school kids will be seeing that day too. How fun is that? So please mark that on your calendar and plan to attend. I will be leading an adult education hour on October 24th. That's next Sunday, I do believe. And the 31st, we're going to be talking about Martin Luther and the Reformation. We haven't had an adult Bible study in hour for quite some time because of the pandemic. So it will be great to be back with you uh, meeting together over in the Sunday School classroom next to the offices. That's where we'll be for, for that time together. It'll start at 10.15, so don't worry, I won't deny you your donut or coffee. <laughs> Get that first, and then bring it with you. You're welcome to, uh, to eat and partake while we, while we learn a little bit about Martin Luther. And many, many thanks to everyone who helped to support the pork chop dinner this year. We sold 325 pork chops in an hour and a half. <laughs> I don't know how that was possible, but it was remarkable. Um, <laughs> The biggest draw was drive through interestingly enough. The drive through window was very, very busy, if we can call it that. So thank you to all volunteers, thank you to everyone who donated food, thank you to everyone who rounded up um, your, uh, your meal total. Uh, we don't have the exact number quite yet, but we're looking at uh, well over $3,000 raised for our Christian Education Fund. So a great year, a great turnout. Thank you very, very much for your support this year again. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, I invite you to stand as you're able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like a lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God.
continue on page 213 in the front portion of your handout. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
reading is from Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the punishment that was made us whole, that has made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like sheep that, had, that before its shears is silent. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their inequities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Psalm today, Psalm 91, 9 through 16, will be read responsibly. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. Lord, we will follow you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give, give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who me. I will hold them because they call my name. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, 1 through 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well <clears throat> as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take, it, take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and, and supplications with wild cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what, what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Mephilzeth. Here is the readings.
Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave of all. And the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's begin with a question today. It's a question that seems simple enough, but if we actually allow ourselves to dig a little bit deeper into our own thoughts and our own feelings this morning, it might become a little bit more difficult to answer. You ready? Here's the question. Who will you serve? Who will you serve? As a culture and as human beings, we place a high value on freedom and accomplishment and self-sufficiency, self-determination, and so on, right? Which is why if we slow down and wrestle with this question, who will you serve, we'll recognize how much it honestly goes against our deeply held beliefs and culturally formed sensibilities. Because perhaps one of the most pervasive thoughts of our time is that we are indeed free and self-sufficient beings who can live lives independent of loyalties, of devotion, and of service. And even more so, think how much time and energy and money is used in advertising and media telling us to spend our time in service to the idea that we don't have to serve anyone but ourselves. <laughs> have you felt that before? Do you want to be a multimillionaire? It seems like every couple of months we're told that all we have to do is buy a lottery ticket for the chance to be a multimillionaire. And millions upon millions of people will go and buy lottery tickets. And I can't blame them. The world we live, live in tries to convince us again and again that to be wealthy, even extremely wealthy, is to be happy. Did you see the smile on the face of Jeff Bezos this last week after his aerospace company sent William Shatner to the edge of space? Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com, has a net worth floating right around 200 billion dollars. The truth is that there will always be something or someone that we're serving in this life, whether we realize it or not. The same idea is right at the very heart of today's Gospel reading, and really uh, all throughout the Gospel of Mark. It's helpful to look at the chapters and verses that surround this passage because the steam becomes so much clearer in doing so. Jesus is journeying to Jerusalem. He's making it known three times already that there, will, that there he will be put to death. These stories that take place before and after these announcements revolve around 
one common theme, curing blindness. In chapter 8, Jesus cures a blind man at Bethsaida, but it doesn't seem to work right away. It takes a little time for this man to regain his full sight. Then comes Jesus' first announcement that he'll be betrayed and handed over and put to death. <coughs> Peter doesn't understand and rebukes Jesus, and Jesus rebukes Peter right back. That was just a few weeks ago we heard that passage. <coughs> then in chapter 9, Jesus repeats that he will die in Jerusalem, a foreshadowing that terrifies his disciples into silence. So they begin arguing with each other about who's the greatest among them. Again, because they simply don't get it. Jesus' words take time to sink in. So he places in the midst of them a child and tells them that leadership and greatness is all about welcoming the least of these, the vulnerable. We heard that story a couple of weeks ago, too. Now, right before today's passage, Jesus says once again that he is going to Jerusalem and he will be killed. And again, <coughs> his poor disciples, they just don't get it. At least they're consistent, right? <laughs> Instead, today James and John ask for special places of honor. And then the rest of the disciples become angry with them for their own self-interest. Jesus' words have not sunk in. So he says as plainly and clearly as possible that to be great is to serve others and to be first is to be last. And after this comes another healing of a blind man, Bartimaeus. That'll be next, week, next week's Gospel reading. <coughs> it's interesting to me how these healings of blindness surround these three announcements of Jesus' impending death and the disciples' failure to understand and Jesus' ongoing teaching about what constitutes true greatness in this life. And I think that Mark tells the story this way because he knows that Jesus' words and really his whole life run contrary to our natural way of thinking about what is power and leadership and all of life according to what the world around us is trying to teach us. And because of that, it does take time to sink in. It takes time to matter. In today's passage, James and John think greatness comes from status and power. And in response, Jesus points out that there's no escaping service in life. You will either willingly, even joyfully, serve others, or you will become a slave to your illusions that you can be free and secure your future through status and power, or wealth, or youth, or fame, or possessions. So let's think about that question we started with once again. Who will you serve? The voices of culture that say you can be free or even must be free on your own at any cost, or the voice of Jesus that calls you to find your freedom and your true self through serving others. Two weeks ago we read in uh, Genesis, the creation story, in relation to Jesus' words about marriage. But I wonder if they aren't more about our relational and social nature as people made in the image of our triune God. We are made, we're created by God to be in relationship. And we discover our completeness, our wholeness, our self, only as we join ourselves to the well-being of those around us. And perhaps that's also how we might hear Jesus' description of his life as giving himself as a ransom for many. Not as Jesus buying us, back from the forces of evil, but instead offering himself in order to rescue us from our own misconceptions, that we are somehow self-sufficient and independent and self-made men and women. From this point, his whole life, including his self-sacrificing death, 
challenges not only our assumptions, but the very powers that be with the surprising and life-giving revolution that as we lose ourselves in service, we find ourselves living more fully or completely <clears throat> than ever before. It's an example and sacrifice made complete in the resurrection and in our own experience as we give ourselves away in service and love only to discover a depth and quality of life we've never tasted. Who will you serve? You don't have to let others answer that for you. This is part of our freedom as God's children. We are freed by God's promise and power to serve others. And we find ourselves. We're given a foretaste of the kingdom to come through this life of service to others. In the name of Christ our Lord. sin and death, and nourished 
by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Creating one. For the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth, so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Suffering one. For all who work toward peace, and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of ref refuge for all your people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. Today, especially remembering Kate, that all may be healed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage readers and ushers, office volunteers, bakers and counselors, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, custodians, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Risen one, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
streams to break forth from the desert, and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world that you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This banquet of God's grace is for all God's children. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 547, sent forth by God's blessing. Thanks be to God.